have one question today. What was he doing out? What was that guy? Osman Khan. What was he doing roaming our streets? A convicted terrorist. Somebody who plotted with his Al-Qaeda mates to form a terror training camp, to uh, bomb the stock exchange, to kill Boris Johnson, to blow up the US embassy. That's what they all got jailed for. They all got jailed for plotting heinous terror attacks. And they admitted it. And uh, what does he serve? Eight years. Mm. Eight years, and he's freed to go and do what he did on London Bridge. He it's was, an absolute disgrace. He was originally on uh, an indeterminate sentence, but that was changed so that he was given 16 years and was let out Lord Leveson, the great critic of the press. After he'd served yeah, half Lord, of his sentence. Lord Leveson was running the appeal court that heard that hearing and, and decided to reduce it from indeterminate. To let him to let him basically get out after eight years, Lord Leveson well, had many difficult questions for the press. I've got some for him. I Where think, is he? Where I is think Lord it's Leveson? Extraordinary. I, I would like to know what sort of checks were done on him before he was allowed out. What checks were being sentence. done with him now? Who was following him? This guy had a tag apparently. Mm. Or, or where was it attached to? This guy's on a tag. How is he able to commit murder? Who's following him? Who's taking interest in him? Mm. Supposed Who knows to, what he's up to? Supposed to be Where are the other 74? Where are the 20,000 jihadis that we believe are now still uh, in this country? Where are all the people who are being brought back from Iraq and Syria? What about these ISIS brides that they are so keen to bring back to our society? Where are all these people? What are they doing? So an Why are they not review... being locked up indefinitely until there is zero chance mm. by professional experts that they will ever re-offend? An urgent How can you possibly know that after eight years? launched of terrorists released from prison now as a result of that knife attack by the convicted terrorist Usman Khan. But what is so tragic about this is that the two victims showed such faith. Uh, 25-year-old Jack Merritt was a course leader for Learning Together, the University of Cambridge programme, where prisoners studied with university students um, described by his father as a beautiful spirit and a champion for underdogs everywhere. These people were Al-Qaeda terrorists. And we let them back into the streets after eight years because we've gone weak in this country and we think that this is fine. And he was never rehabilitated. He was never de-radicalised. He played the entire system. And here's the twist. Because of these new regulations that got brought in, he never even had to meet the parole board before he got released. He never even had to sit there, like most serious criminals, and have someone go, well, have you changed or not? Nothing. That seem absolutely... Halfway absurd. through the sentence, off you go, son. Oh, really? That's it? Mm. You threatened to blow up a stock exchange with your mates? Yeah, you heard chattering about that, about setting up a terror training camp, killing Boris Johnson, blowing up the US Embassy, and you just get let out? Also want to pay tribute this morning to 23-year-old Saskia Jones, uh, who also studied at Cambridge University and was a volunteer at that Learning Together uh, Cambridge Criminology Department Prisoner Rehabilitation Programme. Two young people, brilliant young minds, mm -hmm. both been to Cambridge, both in the absolute flush of, of young life, ready to go and make their mark on the world, snuffed out by a convicted terrorist who should never have been let out of prison. Her family describes her as a funny, kind, positive influence at the centre of many people's lives. She had a great passion for providing invaluable support to victims of criminal injustice, which led her to the point of recently applying for the Police Graduate Recruitment Programme, and it's wishing not... to specialise in victim support. It's utterly heartbreaking and enraging and... Uh, the irony of all this, of course, there they were helping mm. prisoners, you know, who'd been released to try and rehabilitate. I'm all in favour of rehabilitating prisoners, absolutely. But this in one fact, individual some of, some of the people, played the system. Some of the people that tried to, to apprehend this guy were themselves rehabilitating mm. prisoners. One of them was a murderer. Okay. This guy was a ticking time bomb. He played the system. He said and wrote letters and did all the things you have to do to get out. Mm -hmm. And then within a year of getting out, he commits mass murder. And we're all supposed to go, oh, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate. No, it's not just unfortunate. It's a scandal that goes right to the top of this country, to 
various prime ministers, to various governments, to the judiciary, to Lord Leveson, the great scourge of the media. What was he thinking? He was told by the judge who originally passed sentence that these people, including Usman Khan, were very dangerous. And he decided that that was not enough to warrant an indeterminate sentence which would have required him to be before the parole board. No, no, no. He had to go to that new sentencing, which was brought in by Labour, uh, but I think there's a stain on all their houses, frankly, on this. And I think trying to score cheap political points that both parties are trying to do is disgusting. And it, it, it's totally self-interested and electioneering. And it shouldn't be... We shouldn't tolerate it. But the bottom line is, this guy shouldn't have been out. And, I, and we woke up this morning, came in. There's just an unbelievable amount of people tweeting us, mm. emailing us, texting us to express their fury and their incredible sympathy with the families of these two... And by the way, two people have died. Others have been seriously uh, injured. You know, these, this is not the end of this. There are other people who were seriously injured in this guy's rampage. And he would have done a lot more if he'd been able to. He was, he was in the end, brought down by some incredibly courageous people, including this Polish chef, Lukasz, uh, Lukas, who you could see remonstrating with a, with a prized... Whale tusk. Rehabilitation can and must work, because otherwise you would keep offenders in prison forever. But you know what? And some people... if you keep some yeah. offenders in prison for too long, it can actually increase the chance yeah, I hear that they're going to re-offend. I hear all this. So we have to... I, I hear all this. We have to I be, hear all I this about... we do have to be quite considered Listen, and quite careful. these were terrorists. Yes. Right? These are not just regular criminals. These are jihadis. These are people who've been brainwashed to be mm -hmm. mass murderers. Right, they're not regular criminals. And there are programmes to de-radicalise, and in this individual case, and perhaps others, of course, it didn't work, and it looks like Usman Khan played the system. So how much faith should we have? These are the questions we're asking this morning. Can you let anybody out after eight years who's plotted, who's plotted with his mates to commit mass murder? It seems extraordinary, and not long enough. And why he wasn't checked before he was allowed out because of the... Automatic release. Off you go, son. Go on. Off you go. Out you go. Done your time. Done your eight years. And where the monitoring is and what the reasons are for all of these things failing the community on Friday afternoon.